By cutting the bottom off of a plastic cup, you can create a collar that can protect your young plants from cutworms. There's very few things more disappointing than seeing a young plant laying on the ground after it's been cut at ground level by a cutworm. By using toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls, you can create your own biodegradable seedling pots. Simply cut slits using a pair of scissors at one end of the pot, and you have your own seedling pot that's ready to use. By leaving the soil level below the top of the tube, it can also function as a cutworm collar. Something as simple as soapy water makes an excellent insecticide. When you knock insects or drop insects into the soapy water, they die very quickly. Soapy water will kill all types of insects. In this case, I'm killing blister beetles, but it will also work very well on caterpillars and other insects. If I see a leaf like this with lots of caterpillars on it, I simply cut off the leaf and drop the entire leaf with the caterpillars in some soapy water. By eliminating these milkweed bugs before they grow up, I also eliminate all of their potential offspring. So you can keep their numbers in check a lot better than waiting. Cilantro, like you see here, can easily be frozen and used later. You can freeze it using olive oil or water. I try to harvest some leaves without too many stems. Then I put it on a cutting board and chop it up with a knife. I then put it in a food processor with some olive oil and pulse it a few times. Then it's ready to spoon out into an ice cube tray. After it's frozen, you simply put it in a freezer bag and it's ready to be used the next time you need some. The next time you have a tall, lanky tomato plant, don't be afraid to bury part of the stem when you plant it. Cut off some of the lower leaves, then make the hole much deeper than you normally would and bury a bunch of that stem. All along that buried stem, roots will form and you'll have more roots than you otherwise would. And you won't have to worry about that tall, lanky plant being broken by the wind. When you have freshly worked, loose soil in your garden, you might as well put up a sign that says, Cats, please poop here. By placing plastic forks like you see here, it will discourage cats from digging in that area. You can also use something as simple as a broken stick. After the plants grow and the soil settles, the forks can then be removed later. Chives and other perennial herbs and flowers can be easily divided to make more free plants. With many plants, it's just a matter of digging up the clump and then pulling them apart, like I'm doing here with the chives. You can end up with a bunch more for yourself, share them with friends and family, or even sell them if you want. Last year I divided our rhubarb and I had more for us and I still had enough to share with my sister-in-law. Here I'm dividing some hostas, once again simply by pulling them apart. Have you ever noticed wasps around your cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, and other brassicas? They are there looking for cabbage worms and other caterpillars. They like to eat them. So unless you're allergic to bees and wasps, wasps can actually be your friend in the garden. If you bury the end of a raspberry or blackberry cane, it will grow roots and make a new plant. Here I'm burying the end of a raspberry cane and then I'll come back a few months later and we'll take a look. Two or three months later, as you can see, a new plant has started to grow. That means there are already roots below the surface. And in this case, it grew not only one plant, but a couple of new plants. Now all I have to do is cut the stem and dig the plants up, or I could let them grow where they are. Once I make a cut between the mother plant and the new plant, I can simply dig it up and transplant it if I want to. Here's a look at the roots of the new plant, and there's that stem that we cut between the mother plant and the new plant. And here's a look at the second plant. There are several small shoots already starting to grow. 
Even though raspberries and blackberries are easy to intentionally propagate, they spread very easily on their own underground. Don't plant two types of corn close together or they will cross-pollinate. For instance, if you planted a sweet corn and a popcorn close together, you would probably end up with some corn that wasn't very sweet and didn't pop very well. Growing a beautiful petunia in a basket like this one is much easier than you might think. It's actually not growing in the basket at all. I planted the petunia in the ground. Then I cut the bottom out of this old basket and placed it around the petunia plant. And then I pinned it down with some landscape staples. The plant continued to grow and made it appear like it was actually growing in the basket. If you've never tried to grow sweet potatoes, it's very easy to do. You can just suspend some sweet potatoes in a jar of water using toothpicks or wooden skewers. Then, in a couple of weeks, roots will start to grow. At about the same time, vines will start to grow from the tops of the potatoes. When those vines get about 8 or 10 inches long, you can cut those, put them in a jar of water, and they will form roots also. Then when it's time to plant, you can plant those slips outside, like I did here in this straw bale. And I grew my own sweet potatoes from slips. Tomatoes split because of uneven watering. You can control the watering that you do, but you can't control Mother Nature. If you know a rainstorm is coming, pick any fruit that is close to being ripe before the rainstorm gets here. That's the easiest way to end up with fewer split tomatoes. If a tomato is only a day or two short of being fully ripe, it will ripen just fine on your countertop. If you want to know more details about any of these tips, I will include links to videos that I've done on these down in the description. I think the biggest money-saving tip that I could offer is to save your own seeds. If you save heirloom vegetables, you can save the seeds from them and grow vegetables exactly like the ones you grew this year. Some seeds, like cucumber seeds and tomatoes, have a little jelly-like substance around the seeds. You can easily get rid of that using fermentation. Other things, like this cilantro, you can just let the plants flower then seeds will form on the plant. You simply let the seeds dry on the plant and then save them and keep them for the following season. Some things like this basil, I use a small kitchen strainer to separate the seeds from the chaff. Carrots produce beautiful flowers and produce seeds in their second year. Some areas have very poor soil to grow things in. If that's the case where you live, try growing things in containers like these plastic pots. In this case, I'm growing eggplants. Here I grew a beautiful jigsaw pepper plant in a five gallon container. Using containers, some people are able to grow a few things even on their balconies. You can even grow more unusual things like this ginger. Homegrown ginger looks much different than what you see in the grocery store. And it tastes different too. You can even grow something like peanuts in a pot. I've done that before. If plastic pots don't sound good to you, you can also use fabric grow bags. You can grow just about anything in grow bags that you can grow in the ground. I've grown eggplants, peppers, tomatoes, squash, leafy greens like this uh, lettuce and spinach, and lots of other things. And most of the fabric grow bags are very durable, too. I've got some that are going into their seventh year. Here's some potatoes that I grew in a 10-gallon grow bag last year. A third alternative to growing in the ground is growing in straw bales, like I'm doing here. Here's some eggplants I grew in a straw bale one year. If you have more pumpkins than you can use right now, you can easily freeze them for later. You just bake them until they're soft, puree them in a food processor, then scoop the puree into freezer bags. Then you'll have it later on when you need to make a pie or make some baked goods. Starting a new grapevine is very easy to do. My father showed me how years ago. When you're pruning your grapevines, save pieces with five buds on them. 
Then you simply bury three buds below the ground and leave two above the ground. Then keep the ground moist until they start to grow. You'll know when you're successful because the leaves will start to grow and continue to grow. In this case, one ended up growing a little bit more vigorously than the other one. Not all attempts will be successful, so try more than you'll need. Roly polies or pill bugs can cause lots of damage to small seedlings sometimes. They're more active at night or during cool and rainy weather. Here are some finishing off what's left of a stem of a young plant. If most of the damage is happening at night, I found that just covering the young plant with a jar at night time can make a difference. Of course, that wouldn't be practical if you had a whole lot of plants to cover. Whenever I start hardening off a tray of plants, I usually start them off in the shade first, just a little while each day. Then I increase the time as the days go by. After several days in the shade, I use the shadow cast from our house to get them used to the sun. I set them next to the edge of the shadow on the east side of the house, and as the shadow moves, it covers up the tray. That way, if I forget they're out there, I won't accidentally leave them out in the sun too long. Then each day I move them a little farther from the edge of the shadow. Did you know that you can grow a new tomato plant just from a sucker? You can either put them in a jar and try to root them that way, or if the ground is moist and you're getting plenty of rain, you can just stick them in the ground. Once they begin to form roots, they'll start growing like any other tomato plant. Then in this case, we were enjoying tomatoes grown from our sucker in September into October. If you've never done it, it's a fun thing to try. As I mentioned before, I'll put links down below in the description to videos that I've done on these tips in case you want more information. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.